Howdy. Welcome to Osgrave Royalty. I am Justin. This is part seven of our ongoing video series on the book Archetypes by Dr. Anthony Stevens, which itself is a part of a larger um, exploration of archetypal psychology in general. If you're not familiar with me or my channel, please check the links in the description to some like about me videos in, in the in the channel introduction video. Um, if you did watch the first video in this series where I talk about what we're going to cover, <laughs> I made no mystery of the fact that this is my favorite topic. We'll be, we'll be talking about on transformation and the archetype of initiation. Oh boy, this is what it's all about for me. I, having been through, I've read probably 12 books on archetypal psychology. All, all of them have been excellent to one degree or the other. And what I love, my favorite topic that's talked about here and there is the archetype of initiation and transformation. Perhaps I will make the case and my enthusiasm will be contagious. We'll see. But this is going to be kind of different than some of the other previous videos, which were pretty quote heavy. This is going to be a lot more of a riff um, there will be some quoting, of course, but just a heads up, I I have a lot I want to say on this topic, and it relates to the information in the book. So I'm kind of exercising my channel creator privilege here and using some dramatic license in terms of how I deliver the material. And again, please do your own research. Um, especially on this, you won't regret it, especially for the men out there. And you'll understand why by the end of this. But <clears throat> yeah, it's f fascinating and, dare I say, transforming. So, enough hype. We'll be talking about three things here. A quick note on the hero's journey, the Joseph Campbell monomyth. We'll talk about, uh, yes, some of the archetypal initiation uh, from from the book, uh, some of Stephen's comments, which are all excellent, as usual. And we'll have a little adventure into alchemy, which is my new blazing hot interest right now. I'm I'm obsessed with it. I'm listening. I I've listened repeatedly to uh, James Hillman's lectures on alchemy terrible audio recording on audible and it's also on youtube which is also terrible audio quality but fascinating stuff I, hell i turn the volume way up uh, i'll i want to listen to it but maybe one day i'll, I'll cover that stuff i do want to cover mary louise von franz's uh on alchemy uh or i think it's called just alchemy sorry um, covers the Jungian alchemy. So I, I do want to talk about that in a video series. That will be coming later. So, Stephen, I'll open this. So Stephen says that, I mean, you might have heard the phrase like men are, women are born, men are made. Now, what is the real nature of this? Stephen says like for girls... Becoming a woman is an introverted experience, while for boys, becoming a man is an extroverted experience. So we mentioned before, and this is because of periods, um, like a girl becomes a woman when she gets her period. Like all girls will become wom women. But boys becoming men is a much more complicated matter. And... Uh, you know, you, you may already be, already be putting the pieces together in your mind about that, about why men being tradition, like think about like ancient tribal cultures, like men being the hunter gatherers, right? Being like 
there are, there's so many skills that have to be um, implemented and the individual has to be relied upon because the survival of the, of the tribe is at stake, right? So with all that in mind, I, I just want to talk about transformation as a whole. So with the hero's journey, if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to go through it very, very quickly. But please do your own research here. I'm going through it very, very quickly. Okay. So first, you have the ordinary world. This is the day-to-day. -day. Um, go to your 9 to 5, whatever. Step one. Two, there's a call to adventure which um, draws him away from his everyday existence, right? And this may be a thought that you can't get rid of. This may be a dream you have, a goal you have. Maybe you meet somebody. Maybe you start a new job. Um, whatever. Now, this is the part that I'm obsessed with. And I, I have to stay on track, but it's very difficult. <laughs> Mercy. Okay, so... Now he can either, he or she, can either accept or refuse the call, right? Uh, I just got to say one thing about this. I was always annoyed growing up with this step because I was like, if you're called to a hero's journey, why would you ever refuse? <laughs> oh, little did I know. The refusal can take many forms, which we'll get to, <clears throat> hopefully. So then there are, upon acceptance, there are a series of trials they must overcome. And then allies and elders, this is typically three trials you find in fairy tales and, and so on. Allies and elders and, uh, and a mentor typically arrive to come to, their, come to his aid to overcome those trials. And then there's a grand trial in the inmost cave that the hero must overcome. And having overcome that trial, our hero then gains what's called the boon. And then the hero returns back to his previously everyday existence, able to share the boon with those around him and make life generally better. Thus, a transformation has take, taken place. Now, I... I I wanted to run through that. Justin's <laughs> brain has concocted or has noticed something that it cannot not notice. <laughs> that the hero's journey, the archetype of initiation, and the basics of alchemy might be the same process. And I'm just scratching the surface here. There, there are slight variations. I'm a mere mortal. But I really want to dive more into this. So, to continue. Stevens articulates the initiatory process in the following way. One, initiation is primarily an all-male concern, and we'll get to why. Two, the young initiates are removed from all contact with females. Three, they are subjected to ordeals and trials of endurance by the older males. They are hazed and humiliated. Four, they are instructed in tribal lore, myths, and traditions. Five, they are ritually slain. This is very important. They are ritually slain and brought back to life. Six, everything is done in the name of tradition, hallowed by the tribal gods. Initiates usually know what is to happen to them but are brought up in knowledge in the knowledge that it is ordained and therefore inescapable. Whereas nature turns girls into women, society has to make boys into men. The initiator experience for the male is altogether more extroverted, more public in its forms. For the female, it is an introverted dawning of awareness of herself as a woman. In terms of attachment theory, therefore, initiation can be seen as a means of facilitating the transfer of attachment from mother and family to the male group and the tribal gods. This is already 
a nuclear insight. When you think about the role men traditionally play as like providers and, and all that, and boys being made into men, and how men and how society often rests, the success and thriving of society often uh, is shouldered by the men. We deal with the external world. It is, Stevens continues, it's believed that boys, unlike girls, have to fight their way out of the original ego self-identity that the masculine consciousness develops by opposing mother and self and ultimately overcoming them by force. Symbolically, sim, sorry, symbolized mythologically as the dragon fight. All right? <laughs> like Jordan Peterson, right? Um, there's, yeah, there's a lot packed in here. So, I have a joke in here that I wrote for myself. How self indulgent is that? Um, if you comment below, I'll, I'll reveal it, but not right now. Uh, I I can have a sense of humor about myself. So, Ro one of Robert L. Moore's he, he's the author of King Warrior Magician Lover, which will be which is the book we'll be covering in the next video series. Um, he I want to add an observation that he had that it is critical to understand critical all caps critical that an initiation is only properly executed by a ritual elder or ritual elders. Otherwise, though a change may take place, it is not an initiation. All right? This is so in incredibly important. I, yeah, there's there's so much to unpack. So, in other words, all initiations are transformative, but not all transformations are initiations, right? So, let's continue. Um, you know, back to the refusal of the call in the hero's journey. Stevens actually mentions or brings up a concept called psychic inertia. And now with the backdrop of the monomyth in mind, the hero's journey, monomyth, same thing. Uh, listen to this. So, so what's called psychic inertia manifests itself as resistance to change. So I think that's like a, sounds like a Stephen Pressfield book. But yeah, it's, Psychic inertia manifests itself as resistance to change, however desirable such change may be. Oh, I, making this channel, I felt that. Every pattern of adaptation, outer and inner, is maintained in essentially the same unaltered form and anxiously defended against change until an equally strong or stronger impulse is able to displace it. An impulse of this kind may arise from the self with a capital S or the environment. But every such displacement or alteration is reacted to as a death-like threat to the ego. So, having trouble forming habits, psychic inertia. Having uh, choosing comfort over your ambition, psychic inertia. Homeostasis, right? It's bio. This is biologically rooted. Again, st very important you know, for Stevens and archetypal psychology and Jungian psychology as a whole to ground itself in, in biology, in the sciences, in the hard sciences. So psychic inertia, the law of psych Stevens continues, the law of psychic inertia would certainly account for the need, which almost everywhere seems to have impelled mankind to invent initiation ceremonies to mark passage of individuals from one stage of the life cycle to the next. This is, Oh, it's, it's so, it's the cheat code. Uh, not the cheat code, but it's, it's the, this is the hidden knowledge. So if you're not seeing it yet, let me try and unpack this. So 
often in life, again, it's hard to form new habits, right? It's hard to exercise your goals and achieve your goals, do all your ambitions. Like, it's overwhelming in our society, right? Now, imagine if there were a technology. Imagine if there was a step-by-step guide to making your dreams come true to actualizing everything you want. This sounds super mystical, but I'm telling you, this is the practical method that you do it, okay? But I'm but I but it also comes with a, it's a, but it ultimately it's a tragedy, and I'll I'll get to why. So psychic inertia keeps us where we are, right? But we don't want to be where we are. We want to be be where we want to be, right? But you have to break out of that psychic inertia. So, the way to fast track it, or the way it's, it used to be, was that, and I'm talking especially to men, because men are, they say women are sex objects, men are success objects, right? And it's very difficult. <clears throat> but it, it used to be, I don't want to say easier, but way more clear as to what your life path and purpose should be. And I'm thinking of Viktor Frankl here. But there used to be established tracks to go on which would guarantee high status in the tribe. You just have to be initiated. Who would initiate you? The ritual elders. What are those rituals that they're overseeing and enacting? They're they're highly symbolic, and we'll talk about this. Again, those steps we went through, they're humiliated, hazed, right? And you are... You are, you are destroyed, disintegrated. Your identity is disintegrated and then reintegrated, putting the tribe first. Thus, breaking away from your motherly attachments, familial attachments, and thinking about the tribe as a whole was a way of increasing the whole society's success. Do you realize, like... Let me get to the tragedy. Do we have that these days? What, college? We don't have them. This is the greatest tragedy of our generation. Why does society struggle? Why does it often turn upside down why is it often why is it often upside down in every realm in society these days um why are like men struggling there is a criminal heartbreaking lack of not only initiate formal initiatory process, but a lack of ritual elders to oversee the initiations properly. Thus, you get a lot of puer eternus men. This is I- incredibly profound. And it, it is probably what has broken the back of, you know, of society because society rests on the shoulders of men. And if the men are not being archetypally actualized, then society falls with them under, under their weight. And they say like that, there's that expression, um, like the strong time, you know, weak men create uh, desperate times. I, I, I'm blanking on the phrase. Uh, I'm worried about the time. So, but yeah, yeah. It, <clears throat> And there, there's more to this, so let me let me let me continue. So Stevens continues: such rites would help to overcome psychic inertia by providing the symbols and the group impetus needed to carry the libido forward and loosen the ties holding it back. And it may well be that the widespread forms of pure puerility <laughs> apparent in our own society are associated with the decline among us. Uh, among us of these individual aids to maturity. Okay, he said everything I was trying to say, but much better. Jung maintained that the development, that 
maintain the development could be arrested and distorted not only by events in the history of the maturing individual, but also by his fear of taking the next step along the path of individuation. TLDR, change takes energy and the body loves homeostasis. The archetype of initiation contains the power needed for transformation to break the homeostasis and affect change. Initiations are the launch pad that used to propel men into greatness. And everyone knew how the launch pad worked. And there were, in, there were engineers that knew how to work the launch pad and set everything up for proper launch, for a proper successful launch. And <clears throat> the women had their, you know, the only men that were available were incredibly initiated men. And of course there's nuances on how that exactly plays out in the society, how, you know, given all the customs and, and all that. The point is, a lot of men these days wonder about what, what their purpose is. And, you know, women are kind of all married to the government in a way. Like, men are designed to protect and provide, right? Well, you have the military and the police, and it's been outsourced to the government, provi provisioning through welfare and taxation. Um, so men are just kind of being siphoned, their energy is being siphoned out of this fog of government. Hashtag anarcho-capitalists here. Um, and men are like, well, if we don't need to protect or provide anymore, what are we? And feminism is happy to provide the answer, which is you're nothing but broken women. And that's where we are. So, again, this is about survival, fundamentally. Why did these... Why, why initiate at all? Why go through the hazing, the rebirth? Because, you know, just like smithing or whatever, you men, you know, they you fold them just like steel and they become stronger. And uh, the strong men or, in, you know, increase the success of the tribe. So um, <laughs> time is flying for my 30-minute window here. Let's see. Um, Stephen says, with the evolution of culture, initiation rituals apparently became necessary because individual willingness to submit to the demands and disciplines of outer reality is not something which occurs automatically with normal processes of growth. It has to be imposed with sufficient determination to overcome what is called the renegade tendency. That combination of inertia, fear, and resistance to change, which characterizes the trickster archetype who clings to the status quo and knows no difference between right and wrong and accepts no discipline other than his own experimental attitude to life. In other words, a puer. Um, yeah, this... It's amazing. It's kind of like a, the body really doesn't want to do anything by default because that takes energy. And initiations and libido here. We mentioned libido earlier. I want to bring that word back. It's not just like being horny. Um, it's, it's like mana in a video game. And I think mana should be brought back too. Um, as a serious word we use, but mana, I like to define as that energy, that psychic energy you have to affect change at all. So it's like, you know, you don't have the mana to start a business. It's just, it's a combination of will. It's like this renegade tendency. It's fear and resistance to change and psychic inertia. And initiations overseen by a ritual elder who are guaranteed to raise your status. It's like there's all this self-help stuff about level up, you know, especially towards men. Level up, you know. Um, this, was a, this was the way to do it. Now there are no tracks to do it. We're all, like, wondering, well, what do we do? Do we get money? Do we work out? Do we, like, what am I supposed to do, you know? Um, nothing feels right. You have to make up your own mind. And... It, it didn't used to be like that. 
So there's pros and cons. That's a different topic. Comment down below, of course, but I want to continue here. So Stevens continues, thus it is hard to escape the conclusion that initiation rituals possess biological as well as psychosocial significance in that their practice would evidently promote the survival of those populations in which they occurred. And you can infer that the more potent the initiation, the more strict the rituals, the more constrained and the more focused and intense those things were, those initiations were, the more archetypal manifestation the society is going to have in its men, thus its society, since men are concerned with society as a whole. So, uh, I'm running out of time and I have so much more to talk about. All right, I got to move on to alchemy. I, I don't want to leave this video without talking about alchemy. So we've talked about the hero's journey. We've talked about the initiatory process. Now I want to talk about alchemy. And this is this is Justin's rant slash thoughts slash what I've heard from James Hillman. Um, just me putting it all together, riffing on it, okay? So alchemists, and I'm going to go fast, okay? And I promise we'll be talking about alchemy a lot on this channel. So... In alchemy, you start with a prima materia, hashtag Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's the substance, the issue you're wondering about, that that nagging feeling, right? You're, or you're, you're just your essence as a whole, right? And you, this is the alchemical process. Doesn't that sound like the ordinary world? <laughs> yes. So it's placed in a container, that container is shaped a certain way. It's made of a certain material, so on and so forth. There are infinite amounts of containers, infinite amounts of prima materia. What we are, what we are, are being good alchemists, aka scientists, and doing experiments. So we place the, the a particular prima materia in a particular kind of container, and very important, we seal it. Now, fun fact: Hermes always thought of them as of the messenger god, who I'm inspired by. Because I see myself as being the messenger of ideas to y'all, I always say I'm sending, I'm sending the flare up, right? So there's some Hermes parallel there. There's also Hermes parallel here when we talk about, we've talked a lot about attachments, and that has to do with boundaries. When you seal something, you create boundaries. Hermes is the god also of boundaries. He's my dude. <laughs> okay, so you have the prima materia in a container, with that sealed, there are boundaries. Now you apply heat. These are the trials, right? In the monomyth, these are the rituals. Now, you alchemists, I love this language, okay? They do what's called, and I'm going to be using it a lot. So they do what's called, they cook the prima materia. And prima materia can either be overcooked or undercooked or properly cooked. An example, and I'm, I'm really out of time here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. So I want to give some examples here. Um, a great example of being overcooked, and I just saw this and I was floored by it, but I rewatched Remains of the Day with Anthony Hopkins, the movie based on uh, the novel by Kazuo Ishiguro. Great, great author. Uh, he also did uh, Never Let Me Go, which is also fantastic. Uh, Anthony Hopkins' character in that is perfect a perfect example of being overcooked. He's he's a he put being his occupation before his individuation. So go see that movie and you'll understand what I mean. I also want to conclude by saying uh, that the Northman, fantastic movie, love that. Um, and the Green Knight are great examples of the initiatory process just in a movie with Willem Dafoe and the shaman with the Northmen. Yeah, and basically the whole Green Knight movie is one giant initiation. So I'm going to leave it there. There's so much on this topic, so much. I will be back. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. <sighs> I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye. Take care.